All right, we'll call the meeting to order. It is 6.01. I guess, we, do we need to record them anymore? Or Yes, we do. Um, this, my name is Jill Remick. I'm the chair of the Central Vermont Career Center School District Board. Uh, welcome. And thank you, Orca, for being here. And thanks, everyone, for coming and everyone online. Um, okay, and we do have some guests from Expo, right? You guys are on later on in our agenda. Thank you for being here. And it doesn't look like we have any members of the public. Um, all right, and then in your packet, you have the board agreements and norms, which are always important to keep an eye on and have those front and center. Um, I'm wondering if anyone would make a motion to update the agenda to add the resignation that we got this morning. So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh -oh. Oh, no. I know. I'm just kidding. There, I, you are. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, where do you want? Yeah, I'm frozen for me, too. I'm thinking it'll we be can its hear own you. item. We'll do it first, maybe, because we ran out of. But we can't. 2.9, 2. 2 point, and then we go to 3. That's weird, because we can hear them. Well, we did. Spoke too soon on the internet. <laughs> Else Something's died down. Oh, that looks good. Yes. Okay. There, they rejoined. Yeah, we, we somehow lost internet for a minute, so bear with us. All right, so we'll add. Um, We'll add that agenda revision, the resignation, we'll call it like 2.1A. We'll just add it to the top so we can um, work through that since we have right up the, to 2.9 and then 3 on our agenda. Um, uh, Terry? Uh -oh. We missed some stuff. Could you guys? Oh, no. Terry, I don't think that you did. We um, we um, lost you at the same time, so we just paused. Mm. Is it gonna be fine? <laughs> yeah, Chris said it was on. Weird. It was on. It was off for blast, so that was in today. Oh yeah, four is just in case. Okay. Yeah. It's like six, and I was like, oh, yeah, because we're dialing from there. What? Dialing to the phone. Well, I was gonna hang out downstairs for a few more minutes because four yeah. a couple more board members. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll join on my laptop. I guess. No. No. I have my phone. Could we make a hotspot for your computer with my phone? It depends, because my internet. What do you have for service provider? Um, Verizon has been in now. Try it. Can you guys hear us? Yeah, you guys are working now. Okay. <laughs> keep losing now. So all we did was. Um, we are still glitching a little though. Okay. so happy it's warm in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's almost too warm. Okay, we're going to try using my phone as a hotspot. I don't know if you folks can hear us or see us.
All right, can you folks hear us? We're going to try to use my phone as a hotspot right. for a little while and see what happens. Yeah. And if all of you guys, probably if you turn your video off, that might help us too. Oh, might be just ours. Okay. We don't have a quorum without them, do we? No, but they did all turn their videos off, so they heard you. There's four. No, you're good. We're having internet uncooperativeness. Just to say that was in my house. All right, um, can you folks hear us okay? Maybe not. Should we just dial in, I guess, and have a meeting? Can we do that? A meeting over call? Like that? Yeah, we have a quorum would be two people. Yeah. 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 Here in person. Here yeah. in person. But we can use that. We can use that phone. Oh, we could use, it. use, could use one of our cell phones. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That might be the easiest. Let go. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. Yeah, my internet was a hole. A hole. <laughs> 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 that's why. We didn't shut power for the morning until 2 p.m. Like 1:55, the power came back. <laughs> I was gonna say I have them on my computer. How do you have? I am connected to. Jody's computer is muted. Well, we can hear them. They oh, good. Hey, are we hey, back? Are we better now? Yeah. They okay. Hear us. Oh. All right. I'm going to speak Miracle. really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll we'll stay on for a little while. Um, all right. So we just added uh, the resignation we got this morning to the agenda. Let's tackle that first. Was there anything you wanted to say, Jody, about that resignation? Um. I wasn't expecting it to okay. come in. However, this is a program that we have discussed closing because we don't have applicants for next year. Okay. That's what I thought. It was hard to tell exactly which program it was, but it seemed like design and fabrication okay. instructor. All right. Thank you. Any questions on that item? Just a quick question. So I'm assuming a contract was signed at some point? Yes. So the the motion would be no, no. letter of intent because we don't have we have yeah. not ratified yet. Oh, you know, so okay. letter of intent right. is signed. That's a good point. Yeah. So how does that how does that work? I mean, I've been you know I've been in discussions where you know people resigned in the mid year and people were upset and they had signed a contract or a letter of intent and didn't want to let them go. I mean, I'm not suggesting that, but you can say that. I don't know that we. I can't tie him here. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. The board just, can, cannot approve it, and question. I can say yeah. you signed a letter of intent, and the board would like you to uphold that. I don't know what the next step would be. I'd have to do some research to find okay. that. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. To to uh, to that, but you feel covered. He's he mentioned in the letter that header. Would you be better to wait and see if couple of the people that he mentioned can actually cover sounds like they can but I don't know we would need to post and hire a teacher it's more than 30 days you yeah. need a license so even though there are folks that he knows that he's apparently spoken to already about this to cover the program hmm. we would need to get an emergency license for one of them if they apply and are chosen 
you we do have to follow the process. Substitute. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. We've made a license. Which is why we got Adam that um, for plumbing and heating the emergency license last year because he was stepping in for more than 30 days into plumbing and heating. So we can we could approve it with the condition of you finding an appropriate sub or an appropriate teacher. So you following up through with the recommendations that he made just so that you're not up in the air for the kids especially are not up yeah. in the air, which doesn't sound like that's what he wants either. Right. I don't think that's what So we wants. could make a motion to approve it with the, I don't know, that holds, but. How about we accept the resignation and then you give us an update at the next meeting? I mean, uh, Jason? Uh, Jody, do you have a recommendation for the board on what to do? I. I want to say that Craig has done wonderful work with the students and the things that they have created are amazing and so this is an incredible loss as far as that goes and I don't want to hold someone in a space where they're not wanting to be mm -hmm. and I feel like he expressed that this was not the right path for him and it's unfortunate that it's mid-year but I don't I don't feel like it's right to force someone to stay in a place that's not working for them. So I guess my recommendation would be to accept his request. I, I don't want to lose him, but I feel like that's what we have to do. Lyman? In theory, we can hire a long-term sub for 30 days, is that correct? Yes, up to so 30 days. So, if if he said he's going to come go through to the break, then we've got all of January to try to figure this out as well, right? So we've got about five weeks to figure it out. I believe the break he meant was the Christmas break or the winter break, and that January first is done. So he will not return. Right. After so January we've got two weeks now, or a week and a half now, and right, and a month after. Yes. not the best for students if it's a sub for that time yeah. is there a possibility if there isn't somebody that the students would just not be able to finish their year in the program yeah I think we have to be realistic that that's a possibility yeah we would it's not something we would work towards in right. any way but we have to be realistic that it's possible um, However, one of the people that he spoke to is already contracted to work with those students for okay. a few weeks. Um, there's a contract with VTC for a week, two weeks, to do some of the 3D, 2D, and 3D design. Mm -hmm. So we do have, we could potentially, between those breaks, fill with support staff okay. and try to meet the needs of the students. Okay. It's complicated because it's off-site, right. too. Right. Any further questions? All right, so I'm looking for a motion to accept the resignation. And Jody will keep us informed. So, thanks, Floor. I'll make that motion. Okay. So I have Floor, Guy. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, yeah, that's a big loss. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. All right, next up, um, I'm looking for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 13th. So moved. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Okay, thanks, Floor. All right, were there any questions or further discussion on the meeting minutes from the 13th? Any corrections? No. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. We passed our minutes. Um, next on our agenda is the student appointees to the board from student leadership. It's been really nice having students here. I understand why they wouldn't be here today yeah. <laughs> um, for a couple of reasons, the weather and school being out, um, but glad that that's continuing to be um, 
glad we're continuing to have kids come and talk to us about their programs. All right, next up we have a program presentation by Exploratory Technology. You guys want to introduce yourselves? And All right. Can we stand or can we sit? You can sit. You can sit. <laughs> I'm Mr. Hammond. I'm one of the Exploratory Tech teachers. Um, I started working here about six years ago. I did a lot of paraeducating at Burlington High School while going through the then Johnson State external degree program to get my licensure in 7 through 12 social studies. Um, I ended up doing a big job search, uh, found a, a job here, um, and um, been here ever since. I enjoy it. I'm going on my third year co-teaching with Miss Olson, and um, I love coming to work every day. That's awesome. Um, and I'm uh, Stephanie Olson. I am the second exploratory um, technology instructor. Uh, this is actually my 10th year at CVCC. Uh, I went to Sterling College way up in Craftsbury, um, and I pursued a degree in conservation ecology with a, kind of a focus in on wildlife management. Um, when I graduated, I got a job for the Montpelier Parks Department as an AmeriCorps VISTA member and served for two terms there. And um, when I was working there, I would take out the pre-tech program every Wednesday for their kind of program time, and we would do different conservation projects around the park, whether it was trail building, it was invasive, um, invasive plant management, whether it was, um, oh gosh, ice on fire, you know, that, you know, all sorts of stuff, um, and did a lot of teaching, and, and I kind of went above and beyond and actually decided to teach teach the kids about, you know, the different trees and the sign, wildlife signs and um, about the conservation issues. Uh, and, you know, as the my second term was coming to an end, the instructor at the time asked me, hey, do you there's going to be a program, there's going to be a natural resources program opening up at CBCC. You should apply to be the instructor. I was young at the time, I got scared, so I applied for the lab assistant, you know. <laughs> um, and I came to work here at CBCC, and I've had a lot of um, hats here. Um, I, I bounced back and forth between uh, natural resources, I was in automotive, automotive for a couple years, I long-term sub expo for a while. Um, and then I was the super sub. And then this position um, kind of popped up and I would do some guest teaching in, uh, you know, in Tim's expo class and um, it just kind of fell into place. Um, but I, I love working here. The students are, it's so cool to see them come in in the beginning of the year and grow all throughout the year. And it's really cool to see their confidence skyrocket and then see them excel and do well in their following years. Nice. Um, so we went back and forth a few times to see how we were going to present to you. Um, I know also talked about a couple times like showing off projects and stuff. Um, so we kind of have two um, parts of what we're going to present to you. Uh, the, the common thread was student voice, um, which we know is powerful, and they're our best advocates, they're our best uh, everything. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we have been preparing for this for a few weeks. Uh, we did do a writing prompt for them uh, not too long ago, and that's what this handout is. Um, it's all from the students. The prompt itself was, um, the uh, how has Expo impacted you as a student, person, and professional? And they could respond to that any way that they wanted to. And we also had um, students do uh, project presentations. So. If you want to take one, you can pass it around while we're doing that. I'll read you a couple from the students. Um, quote, exploratory has helped me grow in so many ways. It helped me grow socially and mentally. While at Expo, I've met a lot of new people, and I've learned so much more about important things. Expo is helping me prepare for my future by having me try out all the programs and seeing which one I like most, so I can go into a career that I like. Exploratory has helped me grow in many ways. I think the most prominent skill I've learned, though, are how to have a good time management and responsibility. In Expo, you learn that you have to have good time management in order to stay on track and not miss out on opportunities. This is a great skill to have, especially if you are going straight into the workforce. 
Expo also teaches you responsibility. You are constantly being paired with new people to do projects on, uh, to do projects on. You have to be responsible for your part of that project. Your peers count on you to be responsible and do your part. Expo teaches you important skills that you need to, uh, that you need to if you plan to go into the workforce. That is typically not, or that, a, that a typical high school does not teach you. Um, Expo has helped me grow and prepare myself for my future by giving me more learning opportunities and giving me an idea of what trade I want to go into. It also gives me good, uh, good teaching on how to pay my bills and read my pay stubs and all that. <laughs> Final one. There's more in here, but Expo has definitely boosted my confidence when it comes to trying new things. In Expo, you try all kinds of different things related to different careers, including going out and shadowing other programs. Having this kind of confidence is really good to have in the real world, because once I go out into a career, I'm going to be surrounded by a whole new group of people and opportunities. Um, so yeah, it was really fun getting getting their voice when we told them that we would be present uh, presenting. Um, it was really it was really sweet. A couple of them were like, "We can go, we can go, we can oh. come and talk," um, because you guys have all you know. Last time I showed the videos about why they should be excited for shadowing programs. So the kids wanted to do another video, and you know we we guided them and, and asked them like, "What's important to you guys that the board needs to know?" Because you guys can talk to us, but it's our students who, who really, you know, this is, this is their their year with us, and they they kind they're kind of the experts, right? So they made a video. They did they did a really good job. Only two takes, which is good. <laughs> um, but I'm going to show the video. I'm going to present to you guys. Let's see. While you're getting ready to do that, I also forwarded your email with the video link and this to the rest of the board. Oh, awesome. awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me see. It looks like your video is off. Yeah. I think if I do. So I'm going to restart this video. I'm going to make it. Hi, I'm Mr. Hammond from Exploratory. Hi, I'm Ms. Olson. Um, I'm also an Exploratory instructor. Uh, welcome to Expo. We wanted to show off some of the things that our students do. Hi, I'm Gavin. I'm a CVCC uh, Exploratory student. This is our electrical program. It is uh, one out of ten programs that we studied. In this program, we learned how to wire in outlets and light switches. Some tools that you will need in order to correctly wire in a outlet or light switch is your strippers, your cable strippers, or a flathead screwdriver. Um, other than being in the shop, we learned a little about the Ohm's Law, which is where you take your resistance and your current and you multiply them to get your total volts. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm also an uh, exploratory student. This is our building trades project we did. We uh, made model houses using uh, wood glue, hot glue, nails, and some other cool uh, materials. We used it. Uh, we used the uh, architect scale to build these, so it's really fun to build. I'm Kate from Expo. Program. Um, we Marceau iron, the flat iron, and the curling iron. Um, we got paired up with cosmetology students and we had an hour to make it up to. Hi, I'm Victoria. Before Thanksgiving break, my class did a cook-off. There were four different groups and one group made tacos, um, another made chicken stir fry, uh, buffalo chicken ranch mac and cheese, and the last group made cinnamon swirl casserole. And um, the chicken stir fry won. And my class learned how to budget and how to use time management. And the budget for each group was $50 to serve about 20 people. Hi, I'm Alex from Expo, and this is uh, 
This unit we've been doing was the spoon carving unit. We've been given a piece of wood to carve into a spoon. And that we're going to later auction off this year to make this money for a end of the year field trip. And so far we've made, I've made this spoon and been pretty proud of it. My friend Yavin also made this one, which is a more casual spoon, we were just like a basic spoon you'd find in your drawer. And basically we have all the tools here. What you would need for carving a spoon would be a sword knife. Probably a detailed knife is recommended but it isn't required. You would need a spoon gouge and uh, I can't remember what that's called but this is something to chip away all the wood. So. Plus the Dremel will help. Hi, I'm Hannah, and this year I'm going to have a leather project. Right now I'm working on coasters and a journal cover. And a few things I've learned about a leather project is how to do a journal snap, how to sew leather, and how to paint, how this paint works, and how the dye works. And how you can only do one coaster. And something I really enjoy is the freedom and creativity. So, um, yeah, so those are some of the projects that we're working on currently um, and what have worked on. Um, right now, we are in our shadow unit, so our students are going to be going out and shadowing uh, every single program. They have to visit it from 9 to 12, they have to participate. We also have them. Um, do a little bit of research and, and ask some questions to stu students in that program uh, and, and further kind of getting to see what each program is about before they really decide where they want to go for next year. Um, they have to do a writing prompt when they come back and um, kind of showcase what they did. And they're loving the shadowing piece. And it's, it's tough. They go one at a time to the program. So like one kid goes to automotive, one kid's go going to, you know, culinary and baking. And so it's it can be a little, it can be a little scary, but they're all doing really, really well. Um, also, you know, some of the things that we're looking ahead on is our work with the Berry Cow Pasture. We do a, a lot of community service. Uh, we work with a conservation group here in Berry. The last three years, we've been pulling invasive species at the Berry Cow Pasture and monitoring uh, kind of that, that growth from them again and seeing if we're able as a class to kind of put a dent in these species that could negatively impact um, you know that that conservation area it's a lot of hard work they're going to be exhausted every year uh, we've gone out there they're tired by the end of the day they're covered in mud um, but they get really really into it um, we also participate in um, green up day the last two years, we have done Green Up Day in Barry and Montpelier. Uh, we're hoping to kind of branch out to some of our other sending school, you know, communities to kind of further helping our sending units, you know, our sending communities. I think that would be be uh, be pretty fun, um, you know. And I'm certified to teach NCCR, and so is Tim, and that is the uh, national. Uh, construction curriculum for um, you know education and research so these guys are going to learn all about shop safety they all have their OSHA 10 certification that they get through our program but they're still going to dive into what's a personal fall arrest system what is lockout tagout what is uh, how do you read an, an, an SDS sheet so that they can go into next year and be leaders and then go into the workplace and already have this information so that again, they can be, they can be leaders, and, and they can have a little bit more skill. Um, they'll also learn introduction to hand tools and power tools, um, and it's it's a great way. It's all in lab form. There is some reading, but it's a great way for them to be hands on as well. Um, one thing our students have said that they want us to kind of do, and when we were talking about this was reach out to more industry partners and get industry partners in our class or us going to their job site <coughs> so that they can make a connection and see what it's like out on the job site. We've been really brainstorming and thinking about who can come in. 
we've heard from previous Expo students who would be more than happy to come back, who's currently working in the field, and would love to interact with our, our current students. And I think that would be really, really cool, I think for the both of us as well, to kind of have that full circle. So um, I know we've got two in the automotive industry who've um, definitely wanted to come back about one in the building trades mm -hmm. that we contacted. <coughs> Her who's shooting engineering? Yeah, I believe so. We're uh, building management because she's working at uh, the uh, new Burlington High School site currently. Oh, right. So that's one thing our students said they, they would like us to kind of bring it into our curriculum. So that's something that we're, you know, we ask you guys, if you know any connections, um, we're going to still reach out and kind of see what we've got. Um, and then, uh, Tim, do you want to speak about your uh, history curriculum with equity? Sure. Um, so one thing we're being more conscious of this year, well, all years, is to make sure that we're um, adequately hitting all of the benchmarks in terms of our proficiencies and um, uh, making sure that we, we aren't just checking off boxes. So um, with um, our history unit that starts generally after the holiday break, we look at American history from the uh, Reconstruction until just about after World War II. Um, and we focus on a lot of history that's, um, that wasn't really readily available to me when I went through high school. Um, so uh, it's just um, interesting to see um, what uh, information students don't know about um, the experience of some unrepresented communities in our uh, history. And um, it tends to be, it's not something that I like to um, force, you know, anything that's contrived with students doesn't work, especially ours. Um, by this time of the year, that's why I wait um, to, have to start this curriculum. Um, and it's slowly um, kind of introduced to them. And that time also we're beginning a new book. Uh, we read two, we read Into the Wild, and the second one is the Freedom Writer's Diary. And with Freedom Writer's Diary, um, it still connects to the book that we read previously because it's a young person who writes down their story, um, but also has a lot more um, things that young people deal with that maybe um, there's a lot of parallels between what they go through, but there's a lot of extremes that they don't see here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, so it uh, ends up being really good, and um, I'm hoping to utilize uh, LIFE, our equity and residence, um, with that curriculum he's already offered. Um, we've talked several times. Um, just want to make sure that uh, he's available. I know he's got a lot of roles to fill in our school. So. Um, overall, we're really happy with this year. We're never not happy with uh, students, but this year um, we feel like something's clicking. Um, you, even with their the time management piece um, and the responsibility uh, to do the right thing. You know, there's we had a discussion with them on Friday about you're in shadow and you might see a different culture because each classroom is a different culture, and just because you are part of that culture for that day does not mean that you, um, you, you're still representing our program and we still have expectations, Jody still has expectations of you. So regardless of what you may or may not see, um, you know, in, in another program, you still need to be responsible for your actions because at the end of the day, you're representing yourself in our program. And in past years, that message has been a little bit tougher for our students to swallow. Now students understand that um, they, they, and they not only are doing that outside of our classroom, but they're doing it inside of our classroom. Before we have to uh, have so many conversations about cell phones, so many conversations about cleaning up after themselves and using appropriate language in the right place, right time. Now the redirect is far and few, you know, few between it, uh, few and far between it. It's uh, nice, and um, I think that um, just. Uh, it's taken a while, but I think we're starting to get things right. You know, we've got a little saying in our class, and if you go to our classroom and if you say, um, if you ask them, like, Expo is a what? They're going to fill in the blank. We like to, you know, really talk with our students about how Expo is a year-long interview. 
And what that means is they interviewed, they worked hard to get into exploratory tech. Now they have a whole year from day one all the way to the, the time they start their new program to, um, that they're, they have to showcase that they want to be in tech because it's hard to get into some of our programs like automotive, like building trades, who have a lot of applicants. Our students can showcase themselves for a whole year and show that they want to be here and that they're ready to do the work. You know, not every kid wants to participate in a culinary challenge. Well, there is because there's food at the end. <laughs> but not every kid may want to do the, co the cosmetology updo challenge. But they understand that they still have to do that and they have to show up, be on time, participate. And it does, it reflects their want to be in tech ed. It's pretty cool. Any questions for us? How many students do you have right now? This year we have 20. Um, we started off with 22, I believe. Would that be in San Diego? Right? Yeah, yeah, we had. We and had. Um, in past years we've had 24. We did switch up our space. Um, so there, I will be the first person to admit that I was a little uh, worried about the space particularly because the space we had before, we had one kind of big room and we were all able to meet, but um, I've been pleasantly surprised with um, having a smaller room has brought a sense of intimacy with our classroom as a whole. And um, we are physically connected and we are emotionally connected um, with those three spaces. It goes classroom, lab space, classroom. Um, I have a mini lab space in, in my area, but, um, uh, I really think that uh, where we're at right now in terms of um, uh, students, the 20 is a, is a really good um, manageable fit, particularly for the space. I think we could go a, a bigger, granted uh, if we were had a bigger space, um, but it, uh, yeah, so that's a verbose uh, answer. We have 20. <laughs> no reason I ask, but it looks a little cramped, but. <laughs> But the cool thing, and like I'll, I'll to talk about that space, um, it's been really nice. You know, we've been focusing a lot of, on community building. When we talked about quarter awards, we were switching it up, and student leaders took kind of hold of that to, to build our community. Um, the cool thing about exploratory is we collaborate with, the, with most of the programs. This year, we didn't get to three programs. We collaborated with seven other programs to kind of introduce them. Um, in the mornings before school even starts, we have students from our program, building trades, and sometimes automotive. They all come in that teeny tiny shop. I have a giant card deck of Uno, and from 8 to 8.30, they're all playing Uno together. Um, and it's kind of cool to start to see that community mm -hmm. start to happen. Um, and, and, you know, I think all the work that's being done, plus what we have done has, has really brought some programs together. Mm, and it feels in those, in those students who are coming in from two years ago, last year, this year, they're bringing friends over from their program. Mm -hmm. um, and students who maybe wouldn't get an opportunity to meet, now they're coming to our classroom, we know them by name. Um, and even though um, we hope to not have to do that, it's much easier to redirect the student when you have a relationship with them, as we all know. Um, and now, you know, someone's being a little bit too uh, animated in the hallway, it's easier for us to kind of tone things down because, um, you know, um, of all of the leaders that we do have in all those programs, which is real nice. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Quick question. I, I was just curious, this is the third year that you're teaching the history, sort of the more diverse curriculum? Or no, second? this is the fifth year. Oh, fifth year, okay. Yeah, this is the third year that we're We've been to working together. together. Okay. Yes. okay, and then, it, so you've seen the kids five years in a row. What, what is the desired outcome that you're looking for now with that partnership with LIFE? But what is your biggest hope? Um, How can we support that? <laughs> so, I mean, 
my my biggest hope for our school with life in general is to have students kind of just um, realize that there's gray areas in, in the world and when and uh, you know I have my fixed beliefs on things but I try to think of myself as somebody who's open-minded and um, I'm somebody who realizes that um, you know there's a, a there's an argument for nurture and there's an argument for nature and um, I know that sometimes when we have students come in and they I mean Central Vermont is such a small place and you know a relatively big world and I want our students to be prepared to be able to function in other spaces that are outside of Central Vermont um, I feel like some of our students um, some of our former students would have a hard time walking downtown Burlington you know I think they would feel like and they would feel uncomfortable there's nothing wrong with feeling uncomfortable I think that's a good thing I just want our students to be able to um, accept people based on experience and not based off of like facade you know and I'm hoping that um, uh, life can tactfully help us make that happen thank you thank you for planting that seed yeah, yeah. So. Any questions from folks on the video? Ashley, go ahead. Um, it's great to hear so much uh, going on with light. This, we should have him at one of these meetings. That would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear what he thinks of how it's going for him um, at, the, at the program. That's a good idea. Thanks, Ashley. He's scheduled for the February meeting because he's working on the equity policy updates, and so he's gonna give the board an update at that point. And I'm hoping he also weighs in at your meeting when, on the 20th when I show up for the budget presentation. Oh, nice, that's great. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, cool. He's our equity scholar in residence, but he's on the Harwood board. So is it is it typical that an expo student does apply to come back to a particular program the following year? Yeah. I'd say what like almost like ninety percent. I would okay. say almost more than, I think <laughs> to apply to come back, at, yeah, we have high numbers and we have high numbers who come back. I know three years ago we had all twenty four. I think at the point we had twenty because we had some students. That first year, first year. Yeah, ago. all of them came back. Last year we had probably at 90 percent come back generally speaking students who don't come back the following year it's due to um, um, them being um, asked to leave our school for something that's happened at, that's out of our control mm -hmm. um, or they move mm -hmm. I think last year we had one that was that didn't come back that didn't because they didn't move or anything right Oh, we have a good some wait yes. list. Yes, wait list. That's true. They all apply. Yes, <laughs> they all apply. Wait list. Yeah. Uh, and that's and that's sometimes a tough thing. That's one of the toughest things that we're continuing. Uh, continuing. Thank you for even bringing that up. Is that we do to accept freshmen, and so freshmen are uh, in a position where they really want to get in a program like building trades or automotive. Um, uh, seniors get priority, and um, you know, in automotive. Having a license is kind of a prerequisite to be in that program. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to encourage our students to um, maybe uh, choose a program where they uh, have a better chance of getting into. Good thing is, is I don't think we've had anybody who didn't get in and didn't reapply. Right. Because yes. those wait lists that are reapplied for this year. Correct. Year, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, tough with some of those kids who come in ninth, yeah, ninth grade and, you know, again, yeah, automotive has such such high numbers that you know mr mckinstry's hands are tied mm. but, but we have some incredible ninth graders that we don't really we, we don't want to lose you know so we have to really talk to them about the fact that like just think about the seat space and you know we need a bigger building <laughs> yeah, need, yeah we need a bigger building and it's also a good argument for a foundations level and then being mm -hmm. able to yeah. build pathways yeah. so that students have access throughout mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we've had so a couple instructors say sorry how many students did you turn away this year mm -hmm. Ooh. 
we had I think our we had I think sixty seven applicants. Wow. Or I think we'll look the numbers. Possibly. I think did we have like sixty? 46? I, don't, I, I might have that in my bag just a minute. I, I, know, it was, I know it was either it was high. It was close to triple what we accepted. Yes. Wow. So, um, and, and you had several that you accepted. They they signed the, bot, the line that they were coming, and then they yes. did it. Yes. This oh, is the first year in. where that's actually happened yeah. like, dramatically. So they usually we get two or three. Yeah. This, this year, we had a lot of students. We're very happy with the way our classroom turned out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we would really, really, really like to try to prevent that from happening again, mm -hmm. because um, yeah, even though we try our best, 65. it's really tough to be able to like see if the students can be a, a really good mm -hmm. fit. Even though we do all these things, if we have all these protocols, it's tough. Yeah. Sometimes we have students who are like, we had no idea a student was going to shine that much. Yes. So why do you why do you think that happened? Um, I. We're, and this is speculation. Um, we continue to fight uh, stigmatisms of uh, you know um, us being a bridging program or a less than general ed um, type of place. And I feel that, um, and this again, this is all somebody, it's all hearsay, but I've heard that uh, there's been times where Parents, guidance counselors, teachers saying, if you go to the tech center, then, you, then you're off college track. Um, or, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes I think snowballs if one person from a school says no, and then the other person is like, why aren't you going? Well, I heard this. Um, again. Or their friends. All speculation. They're or their friends. Of not being with their, their friends. friends. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's why. The students who come to our, to our classroom are so brave because not all of them come with friends. Yes. You walk in our classroom now, you think they've known each other their whole lives because of how close they get. Um, and they even talk about that when we do a circle or uh, a team builder. Yeah. yeah, we do. We focus a lot on team buildings, but in the beginning of the year, we're going to be heavily focused on it. But all throughout the year, we do some kind of team building um, to the point where last year, <laughs> and it, it made us laugh. Um, last year, the last couple weeks of school, mm. <laughs> they, we were told we're not allowed to talk about how many days are left of school because they're going to miss Expo and they're they're like a family and what are they going to do next year without each other? And, mm -hmm. and, um, that, and it's cool to see our, our class really does become a little family. Yeah, we do one of our final circles. Um, we are usually pretty far into uh, the Freedom Writer's Diary, and one of the things that the teacher talks about is like judging books by, by its cover. And we go around and then, you know, talk about a time where you judge a book by its cover. And every single time, I thought, you know, Joey was a mean wrestler who, you know, didn't care about anybody. We were like best friends now, you know. It's just, uh, it's, it's fun. It is really fun. It's really fun. Any other questions for these folks? And you said you sent the link. Okay, awesome. We'll also uh, we'll post that video on our Instagram. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I follow you guys on Instagram. We post yeah. on some fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do. Make it a game. It's really Absolutely, our kids kind of like it. First person to comment or like, they get rewarded. <laughs> and to go to that banking competition where there was buffalo macaroni and cheese that. Oh, that was fun. So yeah, that was a pretty intense project, and the student who was talking about it, um, it, it was a yeah. You judged, you judged. it. Um, in the beginning, you know, we do our culinary unit where they they under you know they learn some of the basics, but then we have this culinary challenge where they're split up into groups of five, and we start talking about the roles of the kitchen. You've got you know your executive chef, your sous chef, you know budget manager. We we have to clean up positions and we talk about how important those roles are um, they're given a $50 budget they have to come up with a recipe and there's um, and they're only given one heat source either a crock pot or, or a hot plate and they have to cook a meal for $50 to feed the entire class and they have to you know they, they then have to, we all went to the store we all went to Shaw's and we had to 
think about budgeting. So 200, you have $200 as a class, broken up in $50 each, each group, to buy your ingredients. And we talk about name brand versus store brand. This year it was like 197.62, so they were, <laughs> they were right under it. Awesome. And then they have to they have to prepare their dish, and they have to keep the, keep their stations clean and plate it, and be ready for 12 o'clock when our judges can show the <laughs> judge to walk in and talk about presentation and um, how it went. And it's it's a lot of fun. It's, it can be very stressful. <laughs> I got to participate last year. It was mm -hmm. awesome. It's fun. It's so fun. Yeah, it was a burger or something. Yeah. No, that's oh, a, that's a cul an actual culinary. Oh, that was a culinary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here and for everything you do. Thank you. It's always exciting to hear about this stuff. Well, thank you. All right. Come on downstairs. Yep. Thanks All right, next up on our agenda is um, the first reading of our remaining policies. I do think we, it looks like this is an action, so we'll want a motion. Um, were there any in particular that you wanted us to discuss, Jody, that were significantly changed? Oh, go ahead. I, I think, and I talked to Jody about this, um, I think the restraint policy, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a new policy out. Okay. So we should I take a look be, at, yeah. uh, you know, replacing that at some point. Um, you know, I'm, I'm fine with approving this tonight because we'll give us something, but... Uh, and we should take a look at that. Okay. And it's just the first reading, so we can make that change. Yeah. So, yeah. Is there a time of year when the school board association, like, or the agency rolls out new policies, or could it happen? It's constantly, okay. it's constantly changing, especially right now, but they restrain when we, we had a, we even had a resolution about that oh, this that's year, right. too. And yeah, there's a couple of others, but usually in our emails, we get when, when there's something that we should be looking at, it comes in an email and yeah, we checked in before about that. Yeah. It, the only other question I had, uh, Jill, was like, have we, sometimes uh, it's worth it to look at the numbers and just make sure that the numbers are aligning with the VSBA. Okay. Because it just happened to us okay. recently at our own <laughs> board, board meeting, and there was a couple that we used to different districts, so I, and I don't know if Barry has done this, he used to sometimes number them differently, oh. and then sometimes we miss the, oh, the okay. update because we have different numbers, so it might be, my, I didn't have time, I was wanting to do that, but I didn't okay. have time, but we might, the formatting. yeah, okay. but we might want to just have, check that our numbers are aligning, because that would make it easier to mm -hmm. see if something is okay. changing, that makes sense to you. And then the other one, there's some red you'll see in uh, C33, the assessment, because our assessment roles are different than the rest of the schools that you all represent. And so I put the CTE requirements and the work keys there. Are there any questions or comments about the policies? Anyone want to volunteer to do the renumbering? Yeah, are you sure? Yeah. In all your spare time. Okay. Actually, I'll take I do it. have one yeah. last question. So, Jody, on the uh, the scholarship award policy, mm -hmm. how many awards are tied to the scholarship committee? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, which scholarship committee are you referring to? Uh, referring to the Spalding uh, High School. I think there's five, and we might have one additional. Okay. Um, I would have to look it up, but I can bring the list of scholarships next time. That would be good for us to kind of know anyway, yeah. I suppose, yeah. So how is that coordinated? What How's the communication uh, line work with that? Um, 
I'm not in charge of that part. But here's what <laughs> I think happens. <laughs> and it could, I could miss a step. But we uh, in-house have a, an application set up. Um, so students apply the, that, and it has just information about them. It has a why, why are they interested in a scholarship? What are they planning to do in the future? And that helps us match if it's one of the ones that requires college or, or not, because the scholarships have different sort of things that we need to match them up with. Um, and then it has also, they have recommendations. So there's a little form to fill out, and a person could also write a letter of recommendation. So they have to have three recommendations. So one is from program advisor, one might be from someone at work, one might be from someone else that they know. So there's three of, of those. And so we go through and the first, we kind of score all of the scholarship applications. Their resume is in there too. Um, so each part gets scored by a committee in-house, which consists of um, the assistant director, and the admin assistant, usually myself, and a couple of teachers, whoever has chosen to be a part of that committee. And then we t discuss them after the scoring and then go through the list of scholarships and the scores and, and the caveats for each scholarship and try to match them up and try to make sure that everyone that completed an application gets something. It's not always possible, but for the most part, we've done a pretty good job. In fact, recently we've been able to give multiple scholarships to some students. If they didn't finish their application, and there's still time before the deadline, we try to push them to finish it, get that last piece, do you have that? And sometimes we have to hold some anyways because they have very specific, might even have, there's a couple of scholarships that are gender specific. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we reach back out and say, does it really have to be one girl and one boy that receives this? Is there another way that we can deliver this piece? Or do they have to be going to college? Or can you, if they're going into the trade but they're doing the apprenticeship work, can that it'll be applied to that? So sometimes we kind of reach back out. So usually they let us identify the students that we think would be there and give a little information about them. So the five or six scholarships that are associated with the investment group. They still I give it to us to. But, but who holds the money, the other money for the other scholarships? That's not included in the. That's that not everything. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have a, uh, a you have a separate fund? Separate fund, fund. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the past years there's a new accounting regulations that we have to how we track that fund essentially. So okay. we've been doing that since we started. I think it was in the audit too. Yes. Yeah, it was shown in the audit. Yeah. yeah it's a newer yeah. requirement. Yeah. I wanna yeah. say in the past three to five years or so, which is fairly new for Thank you. So I'll make a motion we approve these for first reading. Okay. Thank you, Guy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Giuliano. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, so we have approved this slate of policies for first reading. Um, all right, next up is our committee reports. So we'll start with a finance committee, and we also do have the budget presentation link in our agenda. We're in the finance committee, aren't we? Yeah, we're <laughs> going to start with the finance committee. Who's that? Okay. Yeah, we had just opened it up a minute ago with the budget presentation. I don't know if there were questions. That would be, we gave some input to Jody. Does anyone need it um, to be projected? Because I would need to have Michelle log in for that. No, got it. Okay, good. Okay. So the the finance committee met before Jody had her first meeting, which she's always had to put on so many hats that that day. But in, in finance, we've been talking a lot about, and you were at the last meeting when uh, Jody talked about getting offers Brendan and hat and using her director hat too. So and then getting back her Brendan and hat to visit all our schools. So the budget is. The budget is uh, much better than it was, and Michelle is, is here with us. But So we looked at the budget, but we're going to look at that further down in our packet today. Right, Jill? Cool. Yeah, well, so we don't need to do that, because there's that budget presentation. Well, I guess we just do it now. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah it's right now. now. Yeah. 
So let's do the budget presentation first. Should we share the screen? Or I think everybody got to look Everyone at it, got a copy, so they, they all said they're fine. So um, then I think the only change, we, we made a couple of changes, so adding our parameters, but I think the most important thing is that we're telling our narrative, not just showing numbers, but telling what we're doing, what our mission is, and always leading with how we're serving kids, as opposed to just leading with just numbers, so that people know what, uh, what our student needs are and what our ultimate uh, vision and mission as a school is. We added the, the, the budget development to one of the slides and the budget parameter. It, we felt that it was good to add the budget parameter too because it also shows that we are further down from where we originally, as the finance committee, we were like, oh my God, we're gonna be in between 16 and 18. And we are at uh, 12, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, So are there questions on the budget presentation? The slides. First, um, floor. Yeah. So the pupil waiting piece will not necessarily direct directly affect us. So not in the way we're funded right now. It yeah. won't. It won't affect us. It will affect our. Affect will it factor in at some point, or? I think we have to think of it as factoring in yes. because it affects our sending yes. schools, yes. Yeah. and so it affects their budgets, and then our budget impacts their budget also yeah. because yeah. they yeah. pay for the tuition. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in our ascendant district, some of them are being more affected than the, than the, than right. the others. So, but I think for, for actual numbers for us as we calculate our budget, it shouldn't, it, it shouldn't affect us. What it would affect us is as we go to, to pass our budgets, right? Because we are one more, we're more budget that our taxpayers are going to be looking at. Phil yeah. Lyman? I mean, this is just my side, but um, like we did last year, we really need to highlight the fact that our budget is not in addition to when the voters go to the polls. I think it's still confusing for people that they vote on our budget, but our budget doesn't actually add any money to the overall. Also, oh, add that slide back in. Uh, no, we no. talked about so yeah. uh, this this presentation got test piloted at Montpelier last week. So I already spoke with the Montpelier board because um, that's when they could get us in, and that was one of the topics that there was question and discussion about in that board meeting. So I think people just they need they need that reminder, Lyman. You're right, and I think that was pretty clear in that meeting too because. They're like, oh wait, how does your budget work? Was one of the questions. Like, how do people vote on it? What what if it gets voted down? And so we reminded them that all of our votes are commingled. So if it gets voted down, and because she had asked in two towns, and like, doesn't matter. We won't know if it's in two towns or all of them. That what the process would be if we had to go to revote or if we if it's passed because who knows who's voting what? But we win then um, it's already accounted for in your budgets. And they're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So, and Libby was able to help talk about that a little bit as well. But it is really important, and certainly in our messaging that goes out to the greater community, we need to make sure that that's something. What you don't see in this is the notes at the bottom of each slide. Um, so I think you do have the, the presentation, the actual presentation shared with you. So if you're looking at the actual presentation that was linked um, in the agenda, then you have the little notes on the bottom, and the tuition slides have a lot of detail in them. And that's just a reminder for me and then all of you when we get into our February meeting of some of the things that we need to cover and talk about when, when talking about tuition and how it impacts our Sunday schools. Well, the, you know, the compelling slide for me is the, the com tuition comparison pieces. Yeah. yeah. This one we haven't updated yet um, because I only have four others to compare to right mm -hmm. now, but it looks the same. It's it going to look same. the same. Yeah. The Hannaford and Southwest, I do have their numbers. Hannaford's is right around 30,000. Southwest Tech is over 27,000 per student. Um, 
Stafford is 21,000 next year and Riverbend is 176, I think. So those four I have, the others I don't have. Ours is 1945. Is that right? Somewhere around that um, for next year. Could be 19. No. Oh, 19423. Uh, Jody, have you ever talked to the other directors about why, you know, Hannaford is almost 30 and we're not even 20? A lot of the Hannaford costs are debt service for their, their north campus. They have two programs on a, in a new building on the north side. They're the last center that got any funding for building something. So we, we may be joining them in 2029. <laughs> Or before, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's the debt service that really is a lot for them, and they're in Middlebury. So I think the only other thing that I, that I have on my notes here from from that meeting is that we were going to dis discuss putting fifty thousand on our capital. We were just going to have the fund balance discussion, or is that going to wait until the next meeting? Yeah. Um, or should we talk about it today? I think it's all for us to just talk about it. Talk about it. So what we anticipate. So what came up at, at this meeting was that we, in the past, have used one balance to offset tax increase. So in this budget, we have $100,000, I believe, that we already, we know that it's going to be more, that we already put towards lowering the tax. I think as a, as a board, we have to move away from using fund balance keeping our taxes down. That's just not good use of one-time money and it should. So the idea was that we would use that money to put it into our capital plan. So this year we could potentially put $50,000. We're going to need it for when whatever we decide to do. So it would either be for design work or buying line. We don't exactly know where we're headed, but we're going to need that money. And it would be in, you know, I speak for of us that were at the committee it should be a, a poor decision not, not just us but it's it's not that it's used of money and I think we all believe that to just use fund that because it's we're not doing a good service to our students or to our community members right that money is better used for students and student needs and, yeah. so what's the uh, is, is there a rule of thumb amongst your your peers in terms of what's a acceptable fund balance well it's still very new because yeah. we became a new district and we weren't allowed to necessarily you know when we were part of tax center we weren't allowed to have more than three percent and so this is still very new but historically cbcc has put at least a hundred thousand dollars of whatever the surplus is whatever they brought forward towards tuition reduction for the following year that I left in this year, but it is a good idea to start thinking about those, that fund balance of putting it into something for the future for us, rather than these tuition, offsetting these tuition costs. You know, this year's, I can't say it's ever, it's gonna get easier. This year's really hard in a lot of districts because of negotiations and healthcare increases and, and so on. It, you oh. know, we could lower it, you know, within the year or two, you know, maybe. Um, I also spoke to the auditor and um, we safely have conservatively <laughs> at least twice this amount for a fund balance moving forward. So it's just dependent on, on what we would like to do. Is that above the three percent? It is, but now that we're on our own school district, it doesn't apply to us. We're like a, a normal school district. Okay. Well, I know in Montpelier Roxbury we have like a policy that we always keep at least on plus two percent or three percent or something like that in our fund balance mm -hmm. for whatever, and it's been higher than that. And why did you come up with fifty? Was the because we thought we were just gonna. I originally wanted to put the whole hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, I went like, oh my god, we can't use fund balance for. So, but that, when we started to look at the tuition, it just didn't make sense right now. And we just got cold. You know, I was gonna completely change 
our numbers right. to drastically. And when we were year. using 150,000 as the, we, we think that's how much. It sounds like it's 200,000. Yeah. So conservatively. So if it's you know we, in my mind we should just keep 100 because that's what we committed as they created this budget. And then if we have 200, 100,000 should go into the capital fund. And, and start that process that it would be like every year we have fund balance. They, the way that we do it now in our district is 2.6 of whatever fund balance we go goes immediately to the capital plan just to see, you know, in order to keep our buildings. And the buildings affect the student outcomes as we all believe here. So I think it would be a wise way to start moving us out of that, out of that cycle. Absolutely. Of, uh, yeah. I don't think that very necessarily had much of a choice of what they were able to do because that's what the law states is anything over 3% has to go towards tuition reduction the following year. We have to pay it back directly to the school. So are you, you're proposing we leave the 100,000 that we've banked in for this, per this current budget and then we take 50,000 from our fund balance to, to make a amendment to a capital plan to this year. year. Okay. Yeah. That, you know, and it's a change of culture for our community, a change of culture for ourselves as a board, so we start committing ourselves to that. And then you have 50,000 left on the balance, right? Right. And right. then whatever we put in the capital plan is also, you know, we can't move it, right? It's, it's not like there for grabs, because that's what always comes up. We just had the discussion. Well, does it, does it still work where you go to the voters and ask for it to be moved? It depends on the it amount and our policies. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and actually what we what we agreed upon when we became our own school district. Right. Yeah. In the bylaws. You know, it's sort of and, and, and we don't have that look into it. Yeah. So yeah. It wasn't what, what I'm saying right now it'd be philosophical, right? Because we fit in as a as a as a as a district. We have we don't have something that says if it goes and we got the plan can be moved back. But I think that is an agreement that we should not make at this meeting. Well, but any, then, anything's possible. Things happen and Yeah. But but I think what we are all trying to create here is a system sure. that it's not <coughs> it's just an us being in this table, but future generations come to the table, it won't matter if you know Jody is a superintendent or Jody's a chair or you now know, that's whoever. that's a decision we can make and not yeah. and, and not have the voters vote on it. We're gonna have to go back, back and check. check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're just just talking about the idea. Today. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And so it sounds like I might want to bring some policy examples from other districts. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. yeah. I know. Because <coughs> I know, and, and you know, some of the former boards I served on, you know, you had to have voter approval, you know, to use those funds. Uh, yeah, because you usually have passed something that doesn't allow you to do yeah. so. In yeah. Because in the past, that's how we've been lowering our budgets in years previous. You know, you go and you sort of steal from your capital money in order to lower So if inflation. you were to apply 100000 to, you know, this current budget, what effects does that have on tuition, if any? That, that's it's what already in there. It's, it's already, already in there. Oh, it's already in there. Yeah, okay. yeah. And we looked at what it would be to take it out, and it was slightly complicated. Not complicated. It was just yeah. an impact. Tuition increase. I was making step. Yeah. step. I was making Michelle sweat. Fifteen point one percent. Right. Right now, it's nine point seven percent. Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine point seven percent increase. increase. Yeah. And so if you took out that hundred thousand net offset, it's fifteen point. We've, we've used the worksheet that Penny used so to do tuition. Um, it's because it's such a complicated formula. And so we kept all those pieces in. And last week at Finance, started talking about what if we take that out. So we could start slow. <laughs> and then move towards that goal of not setting. Would it gain interest or anything? I think you could put it in an interest bearing account. Any questions? I'm sorry, Flora. I'm sorry, anything else? No, so if the committee is okay with that, then we can come back with a proposal, you know, but at least I think we could have agreement to at least put $50,000 or some capital plan. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead, Lyman. Uh, mine's not about the capital, uh, so if we're still talking about that, I can wait. So I guess, could we just do the thumbs up? I don't know that, do we, or maybe we need a motion to be more clear. I think that Michelle told me we didn't need a motion, she just need a direction. Yeah, right, just need direction. Mm -hmm. We'll do the research presented to the Finance Committee. And then the board. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Right, board, and we'll look at that at the, I was going to say the December meeting, but it is December. Mm -hmm. yeah. January meeting? It'll be one week before we have to announce our tuition officially. Mm. So, okay. I mean, not that we're going to do this much one, of anything. Yeah, yeah but this shouldn't affect the, the, because we're not taking out the 100,000. It would just, if anything is where the numbers will be shown for the fund balance for the capital. So, okay. we won't be making you crazy totally. All right, any objection to the Finance Committee coming back with a proposal? <laughs> Sound like a plan? Thank you very much. Oh yeah, Lyman, go ahead. Jordan, I was just wondering, if, did you um, discuss any of the policy, uh, the program quality changes in the meeting, MLP? Um, one of the things that you see in that slideshow is the head count, and you see the zero out on the design and fabrication, and you see welding is in there with 16. Uh, I did talk about that being our likely future because we have lots of applicants for welding and zero first choice applicants for design and fabrication. We have two students currently in the program who would like to co-op. That's all we've got. So I did talk about, about that. About the board lane decision. I d yes, also talked about that. And actually, I sent that out to all the principals. We sent it out to all the counselors across the schools, sent it to the superintendents, met with the superintendents. There were no questions or really concerns about it. They're, they're good with our choice and understand the reasoning. All right, any further questions or comments? Michelle. All right, do we have a facilities committee update? Yeah, last um, Monday we met with Trex Collins and um, discussed, you know, the previous plans that had taken place um, and the fact that we need to refresh some of those, right? We need, there's new information that needs to be put into them. And we talked about that and some of our um, visions and thoughts about what we would like to do and they were supposed to come back with a proposal hopefully by tonight but they didn't quite make it um, they have some additional questions and clarity that they would like so we're meeting with them Monday morning uh, Monday morning it is Monday Wednesday morning at 10 okay. to um, chat with them again and hopefully come back with a proposal great so thank you yeah they're You're not going to be working on anything <laughs> they shared a timeline with us today, a potential yes. timeline, so it feels exciting to be starting something. Yeah, we have to start somewhere. Big progress. Yeah. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments on, on that piece? All right, I guess maybe, so maybe we'll have at the next meeting, a, you'll have more information from those folks. Okay, great. Yep, we should. Thanks. Um, program quality. I think you guys we didn't meet. didn't have a meeting since the last one. Okay. Um, negotiations. So we'll provide an update. We have a couple item two point nine, and then we'll have an executive session as well. Um, okay. Board handbook draft action. I think it might be ready. <laughs> Did anyone notice anything else that needed to be in the board handbook? I feel like I have the charge and the of each committee and the goals accurately reflected in there. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think it, we can adopt it and also know that it's a living document. Right. Yeah. Any motion? I guess I do. So moved. Okay. Then we adopt it. We have a motion to adopt the board handbook. Do I have a second? Oh, Terry. Sorry. I, I just, I had a question. I just couldn't find it. I just found it. <laughs> so if you, sorry about that. If you look at page 27, and this was kind of something I was going to bring up when I, we were getting cut off. Um, I was elected for one year, so I need to be real. I, I need to run again. Um, and on page 28, that kind of is in conflict because it says WCUSSD election year to 2023, 2026. Mm. So I think there's something wrong in that uh -huh. in the uh, matrix, the chart. So I just wanted to make sure we double check that, okay. that data. Terry, are you sure that you ran just for one year? Yes, I'm she positive. was appointed and I'm then she ran. So that is off. Um, yeah. Because that. Our, our, what was our the popular clerical page? 27 and what? What was the other page? 27 and 28, Stephanie. It should be 2023, 2025, I think. 2022, 2025? No, it should be 24. And then whatever. Because, Lyman, didn't you run last year? And you ran for three. Yeah, right? so I got a 20 you ran in 2023. Yeah, we, I can't do should, any research. I, right I was going to try to do some research. Uh, Terry, we should check in with the... With the um, check the articles of agreement. Uh, yeah, with Rosie, too, because... We I ran one. one. Carol told I'm, me I'm, that she's up for election. Oh, mm -hmm. Carol told you she's up for election. Yes. Okay, because we were then we were confused with uh, our East Montpelier clerk. Sorry, we can't that. see you right now, because we're looking at for the articles. Oh, okay. No, I, I'm positive I ran for one. Okay. Yes, you did. And and just okay. so you guys know, I'm leaning towards not running again. Oh, so. wait, wait, wait. What? Change the numbers now. Oh. Just when we're starting this project? Oh, my God, Gary. I stay, I'll stay on the facility committee as a oh, community okay. member. Okay. Okay. That's but I haven't totally made up my mind, but I just want... Get the word out. I like competition. <laughs> It'd be great if someone ran against me. Okay. But well, do you know if anybody that wants to run, there's mm -hmm. a webinar tomorrow at 7 p.m. run by the Vermont School Person Association of anybody that is thinking for running. So please let your friends know. Send a little email because <laughs> <laughs> we need more people. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, oh, did we end up, no, was there another question? Ashley, did you have your hand up? Or were you our second? I think she was our second. And can I just, I didn't hear, who was the first? Was it Juliano or Guy? Guy. Guy. I was the second. Oh, thanks, Ashley. Okay. Any further questions or discussion on the handbook? And as Jody said, it's a living document, so it'll always be up for amendments if we need to. Okay, and then we'll, I, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, so we have approved the board handbook draft. Thank you so much for making that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I'll up, I'll find that and update it so it's accurate too before we take draft off the title. <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we have the superintendent's report. I shared at the top of that a bunch of photos from our open house. Another record-breaking year. Last year we were excited to have over 450 guests. This year we had over 550 guests who attended our open house. Thank you to all of you that came was really exciting and really crowded in some spots um, so it was just fun to see I've also included 
the plumbing and heating program has a new base structure. We were required to do that um, <laughs> when the fire inspector walked through and was looking at some different pieces. And the base structure is a permanent feature, so we got a permit. We built that. Um, they're going to put sprinklers under it in the summer. And then our plumbing heating will build on top of that. So that was one of the sort of disappointments at our open house is that we didn't have that ready to go, so you couldn't see kids working in um, the actual rooms for plumbing and heating. But now that space is done, the, the base is done, the frame is up, and they're getting moving on that. So when we get to trades fair, that'll be an opportunity to see it. Uh, baking and culinary students do some work with the Berry Area Senior Center. So they've started their monthly meals there. Um, they did that last week. And our student leadership participated in Act 77 convention, which was really exciting. We had some students go there. Act 77 is the Flexible Pathways Act. And in the newsletter that you got from our new admin assistant, Anna Ryan, <laughs> uh, today you'll see there's a link to the recording of that if you want to take a look. And, and our students very clearly talk about how excited they are to be here and why they chose to come. And it's, so it's wonderful. All right, any questions on the superintendent's report? Um, and also, at the start of the open house, um, Jody also hosted a conversation with a lot of the area lawmakers, which we actually had a pretty good, you know, we had a good, we had a good crew come in, um, which I think was really helpful. We had good conversations about CTE, about the funding, about um, what's coming down the pike. So that's awesome. That was a great, yeah, that was a great idea. And a couple of them came in late, but they were, they're still following, they're responding mm -hmm. to emails that I've sent, so it's good. All right. Um, next up is the accounts payable, which we had in our packet. Were there any questions about the accounts payable? No. Okay. All right. Next up, I'm very happy to, um, the next topic is the ratification of the teacher's collective bargaining agreement. So just so folks have context, um, the Barry Educators Association, that is our, um, the bargaining unit that we work on with, um, did ratify this agreement late last, Thursday. Sorry, last week must be, today's Monday? Thursday. Um, which means that now as a board, um, I would ask as the head of the negotiations committee for you folks to support ratifying the teachers' collective bargaining agreement. Um, Guy and Jason and I have I think it's just, it's been over a year. I think we had our first meetings in November last year. Um, so I would love to entertain a motion to ratify our teacher's so collective moved. bargaining agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Jason should second it. Second it. Second it, Jason. <laughs> Thank you. Um, were there Who any was the first move? Guy. Okay. Happily, enthusiastically. Um, and are there any questions, further discussion from anyone before we take a motion? All right, and just so folks are aware, this contract is essentially, it addresses this current school year and then next year. So it will be applying sort of retroactively to, you know, the beginning of the school year for folks. Um, so we will, so in contracts the will be going out. Yes. If it's so ratified. <laughs> in a year, we're going to need to pick this process back up. If so not it's sooner. a two-year contract. It it's is. a two-year contract, <laughs> but we're halfway through the first year of it, the first school year of it. Um, so yeah, um, uh, no further questions. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Yay! Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's Thank official. You. Thank you all very much. Thank you, so, Jason and Guy. Jill, Thank you. Uh, if, if I may. Uh, you know, I've said this a few times, you know, what a great job you did as our, our leader. I mean, you really pulled the wagon, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, uh, so, no got you a little, a little sunshine. <laughs> Thank you so for, much. For doing it, you know, oh my you did a really great job, so. Oh, that's lovely. I mean, you know, you folks weren't there, but you know, I mean, she was just our spokesperson, and you know, had to keep notes, and had to do this, and had to do that, and uh, you know, uh, so mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you I mean, so much. People need to know that. I really yeah. that means a lot. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a team effort, and we learned a lot. Um, but that means a yeah. lot. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. I was wondering. Yeah. I was wondering I what those were for. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>
Um, all right, so next up we have two executive sessions. Do we know if um, the folks for our student hearing? I, Stephanie would let them in if they are here, but I suspect that they're not. So 7.45 is their time. Okay. Stephanie? Yeah, they are not here at the moment, okay. um, and I'm keeping a watch. Okay, why don't we go okay. into the other executive session? Um, for the negotiations committee update. So the motion is on the agenda if anyone would like to read it. Uh, I move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of the negotiations update as premature general public knowledge to clearly place the board and the association in well and substantial disadvantage. In addition, we would like to invite our superintendent, Jody Anderson, to the executive session. Great. Second. Seconded by Patty. Do we want to amend the motion to include Michelle or, or Michelle's head now? Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. You can. Farewell. So, uh, well, my kids are leaving. Okay. Yeah, right. Go, go, go. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Great. Um, it looks like. Uh, Okay, so we are back out of executive session, and um, I did want to, I, I skipped over agenda item 1.4, public comments and correspondence. Um, is there an update from you on correspondence we should discuss? So I believe everyone on the board got two emails last Thursday night um, from two different staff members, and then I also shared a letter that I had received um, handed to me with you from another staff member and they're expressing concerns that we've talked about at various points throughout the year so um, one of the issues that we had was with federal tax withholding with our company that we went with to do payroll last year that we contracted with it's part of the reason why we shifted to ERP Pro whatever it's called there's a full name um, that's why we changed our system for this year and we're operating with a different system and so we did have concerns about that I have lots of communication that Michelle had with that company and we're still trying to figure out what's the best way to try to make things right for our staff um, some folks did pay a lot of extra taxes or had unexpected taxes to pay it's not that they paid more than they should have it's just that not enough was taken out of their paychecks throughout the year and so then they had to pay in. Um, so we've had a couple express that they're, they may have penalties or that they're on payment plans and, and frustration with that, which we never would have wanted our staff to have to deal with that piece. We wonder, I wonder, if the board joins the teachers union in a letter um, and maybe with our auditing group to this company if there will be some, some sort of way to make things right and I'm not exactly sure what that would be or what the cost would be some there were some things in that letter that were unrelated so the 403 B pieces that were taken from the payroll those were withheld <coughs> once we got those plans set up and there was a staff member who did not fall through and get them to where they needed to be um, once Michelle was aware of that she stepped in and took over that piece and so she it has been corrected and those have been made since then and I think you could argue that we actually probably not intentionally but saved some of our folks some money um, by not having them distributed to their 403b but that was not intended and that was a staff member who did not do their job and they no longer work for us the last item I think also relates to that staff member who didn't do their job um, our tax exempt status they never filed for it and so when we uncovered that, Michelle immediately filed for it. And it takes eight months, and we're about five months into that, is my understanding. So they have some valid complaints that these things happened. I also think we've done pretty much everything that we could to try to make it right. I'm not sure if there's something else that we could do. Um, I did not respond directly to those letters, because I think there was a need to, to see how you would like me to respond. So is the company owning up to their mistakes? In every communication they had with Michelle, they continued to argue that they were doing the calculations correctly. 
or that they had adjusted them so that they were now correct. So it looks like we're headed for disagreement. Yes, we are. Yes. And I think that what we're going to, what I'm inclined to do is to hand our um, contract with them from last year over to Pietro and have him take a look at it and also get some information about how much how much has actually been lost. Um, so for the the payroll pieces and the federal tax withholding, how many folks that really do have penalties to pay, what do those add up to? For the other items that aren't really related to that company, I would like to see if if there was a negative impact from those 403Bs. I think this this board needs to help me make a decision on how do we write that? Because we do know that that was an error in our office. So I've taken the steps I needed to in that case. Michelle has fixed it so that we're doing it correctly at this point and we know they're going in. But how do we make amends for what happened? If we need to. So it's not, so if they didn't get the, the right amount taken out for a 403B, it's not like they lost money. So they, the money was taken out for their 403B starting in January, because that's when those accounts were set up under the new district. But it wasn't put into them until March, when we were aware of that situation. We found out that it wasn't going in. And Michelle took over, and she put a lump sum in at that point. All of the, So we held that money for a time when we, didn't, and we shouldn't have been holding it. Lyman? January to March of 23, 22? 23. So you held money, but it wasn't invested. That's what you're it saying. wasn't invested yeah. until March, yeah. correct. Yeah. And so there's more than likely it would have been a loss um, to some degree for them if it had been invested. However, we don't know how they invested, and so they could have had gains but they didn't get because we didn't put it in until March. Well, things weren't going great between January and March, so. Yeah. <laughs> right, but it, I, I think it makes yeah. sense to, yeah. for those folks to let us know what that is, because so, we have no idea what sort of amend we could do if we need to. Well, I mean, I think we probably have a responsibility to make them whole. Just, you know, if somebody yeah. has to figure that out, that's, you know, a higher pay grade than me, obviously, but. You know, I can't blame people for being upset, you know. No, I can't either. So we're working to make things right. Yeah. And it sounds like the company may or may not work with us. Correct. The company was recently bought by another company, so we'll see what happens. I, I think it makes sense to find out as much as I can about the actual numbers of impact and then also legal counsel's perspective on it. So would you pick these folks based on what your other colleagues were doing or? Um, no. Or do you remember? <laughs> so <laughs> I do remember. <laughs> it was a very frustrating process. So as we were splitting from Barry, we were looking for a company and we wanted to stay with Tyler because that's what Barry had and they were shifting, Tyler was shifting to this new program. But they wouldn't take any new customers unless we took the new program then, and we didn't have $75,000 to spend on it at the time. And that's what they quoted us at the time, which was about 5,000 less than the USD. So thinking about the size of our districts. Yep. Yep. So we looked at other options. Can we contract out? Can we look at um, QuickBooks using that in the office? Basically, what could we do in the interim while we figured out how could we get to that Tyler Technology program that we now have? And so we were able to um, work through that and we looked at different, Michelle looked at different vendors. She picked this company because we could afford them and it appeared like they could do all the things that we needed them to do. That wasn't true. Unfortunately. So have legal counsel review the contract of that company, and then maybe, and I don't know if, it, if it's supposed to come from me or from you, but back to the 
letter writers that you know we shared their concerns we've taken steps to address it and if they're interested in writing a complaint a formal complaint if that's what legal counsel says we should do with us I don't know um, and I don't know how you quantify what an investment would have done had it so I'm not sure there is an answer and I, I wonder if our legal counsel might have Maybe that's happened somewhere in the past yeah. in Vermont. School. At the time, I did reach out to Chris. Okay. Um, when in March, um, and I can probably find that communication with him, and he he said there were, we did what we could to make it right at the time, mm -hmm. and he doubted that anyone had lost anything. Mm -hmm. So we probably I think he said we probably did them a favor. Um, I don't necessarily agree that we did anyone a favor, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that it didn't go longer than that unnoticed. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I can I can find that communication as well. Okay. Any other questions? Is that enough guidance yeah. to you? Okay. I think so. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you for handling that. I, I guess what I want to know, are you going to respond to them? And I then can. I can follow up with my request for please provide yeah. actuals. Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay. Okay. Send myself a note. And then I see that our yeah. next person is here. So can I make a motion? Yes, please. We apologize. We hired a company that did more than what we thought they were going to do. Oh, I apologize for that. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to move that we enter into executive session for the purpose of considering any matters related to discipline of the student as authorized by 21 of the SAA, section 323, 7 to include Betty Anderson and student family members. Second. So. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we are now in executive session for the purposes of a student hearing.